This is Patrick Watson, and you are watching the third part of 12 different types of Aries rising. So now we're going to be looking at Mars in Taurus in the second house with Aries rising. So first we have to understand the second house. So I call the second house the house of gains, grain, and green. Um, it is most commonly associated with money and one's possessions and... Um, uh, you know, on a more abstract value, uh, on a more abstract level, uh, value. So, why does it represent these things? Well, a planet in the second house is moving through the zodiac away from the first house. All right, it's moving away from the ascendant. But by diurnal motion, any planet which is currently in the second will shortly, within two hours, be moving up to become the new first house. So essentially, any planet which is in the second house is going to be inevitably brought back up to the first. So whatever is in the second comes into possession of the first house. Um, so in a sense, it's almost like a pocket. You know, it's uh, it's so that's why it's connected to um, these topics of you know one's possessions. It's it's always right by the first, and it's always going to come to the first. So it's what you have. And uh, a planet in the second house is going to be more um, kind of stable and solid and surrounded and surrounded by kind of material things and, and more sort of practical, mundane concerns. Um, and planets in the second house kind of store things. So they, they store things which can be used for later use. So... Uh, what, what what comes into one's possession, what's what's reaped in the second is ultimately what's sowed. What's planted, uh, you know, eventually is what grows, what's stored and utilized. So that's why the second house is about material things, possessions, and money. So we're going to look at some real-world examples uh, very shortly. <laughs> there we go. All right. Mars and Taurus. Uh... I like to call this position of having Aries rising with Mars and Taurus, the second house, the miner, the scavenger, and the butcher. So this is someone who's characterized by forcefully producing, extracting, dividing, or sharpening something of material value. Since Mars is exiled in Taurus from Mars the Eighth, what is mined and fought for is vulnerable to being lost, stolen, or destroyed. So these are people who individuate themselves through um, the... Marsy treatment of possessions and ultimate and also some of the dangers they may encounter uh, trying to safeguard what they have. So um, we're going to see this in pretty literal ways uh, with uh, some of my real world examples. Um, it's also worth keeping track of what Taurus, what Mars and Taurus sort of means. Taurus is an earth sign. And uh, it, Taurus is also associated with uh, kind of material value and uh, beauty and luxury uh, since it's ruled by Venus. And um, they tend to be more solid and steady and uh, fixed and stubborn. So we'll see that kind of uh, show up. So here's some more real world examples of the miner and the scavenger and the butcher. So Jean-Philippe Lauer, he is uh, an Egyptologist. Uh, he's a pyramid expert. He was born with Aries rising, with Mars in Taurus in the second house. And there's a lot of other planets in Taurus, but we're, right now we're just going to focus on the fact that Mars is there. Uh, so his life's work was the recovery of ancient Egyptian buildings. He spent over 70 years excavating Saqqara, Egypt. Um, he's this world-renowned expert on pyramid construction and Egyptian masonry. Uh, Egyptian architecture, and he actually reconstructed ancient uh, Egyptian tools and stone drills. Uh, he established a museum uh, of Saqqara full of items that he uncovered and discovered. So his whole life literally has been about like digging in the earth for value, being a miner in a sense. Um, and uh, you know he was very much concerned with with that with you know literally getting things out of the earth um so yeah he is a tenacious digger into the earth for treasure i think that's a really good example of mars and taurus um and especially someone with mars and taurus as their ascendant ruler like this is really like a focus of his life um now he did uh end up experiencing some of the um problems associated with mars and in, in taurus in the second too like 
some of his museum sites were destroyed and had to be rebuilt. Uh, this is due to various political situations in the country. Um, also, he was forced to cease excavations due to war, which was happening in the area. So, um, you know, it wasn't always a safe uh, endeavor, and it wasn't always, a, you know, wasn't always smooth sailing. I mean, there were, you know, setbacks for him. But, uh, you know, ultimately, his ascendant ruler in the second is, you know, reflects someone who, uh, you know, possessions and physical matters are a major focus, and it was for John Philip Lauer. So, Guy Ligier, um, at least I think that's how you say his name. I don't think it's Guy Ligier. Anyway, he's a race car manufacturer. He was born with Aries Rising and Mars in Taurus in the second. And uh, he has some, you know, sort of typical Aries type, uh, Mars type uh, talents. He was a rowing champion, you know, which requires a lot of strength. Uh, he was a pro rugby player as a youth. And get this, he worked as a butcher to save up for a bulldozer. So not only was he, you know, this guy chopping up cows, Taurus, chopping up meat, but he did it to um, save up for something which could, you know, literally dig into the earth and get value. <laughs> so yeah, he operated successful construction businesses and a fertilizer business, and then he entered Formula One racing as a privateer. He owned his own car. And this is quite different from the one Manuel Fangio example where he was just this sort of naturally talented racer this guy wasn't a very good racer but he did own his own cars so we have like the race car driver versus the race car manufacturer like the guy who makes the cars rather than the the guy who's known for just racing them um also he did run into trouble with finances uh he was accused of running illegal funding operations for his racing and businesses with his friends and government uh, so yeah, ultimately this reflects, uh, someone with great physical strength. He's a digger of earth, cutter of meat, worker of metals. And, um, you know, this, his ascendant rule is in the second, you know, and that's supposed to be someone for whom a major focus of their life is, you know, uh, possessions, money, value, physical matter. And that's, that's true. <laughs> Okay, so Ronald Wayne is an interesting uh, character. Uh, you may, well, <laughs> you know him, but you don't really know him. He He's the little-known Apple co-founder. So everyone knows Steve Jobs and, to some degree, Steve Wozniak, but no, one's really, no one really knows much about Ronald Wayne, but he was the original uh, co-founder of Apple with these two guys. And uh, he was born with Aries Rising with Mars in Taurus second, and he was trained as a technical draftsman at an industrial arts school, he was an engineer. He started uh, his first company um, making slot machines, uh, which didn't work out. And uh, he ran a stamp shop, but he kept getting broken into so much that he decided to move his business to a different state. And uh, he that's where he met up with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak working at Atari. Uh, he was actually the first guy to um, draw the first Apple logo. Um, but because of his previous failures of his businesses, uh, shortly after helping these two young upstarts kind of get started with their business, he wanted out. He had, didn't have confidence that the business was going to work out. So while he received a 10% stake, stake in the company, he actually sold it. And then he forfeited any claim he could have to, to get any money out of the company after that point. And if he hadn't done that, he would have been worth $75 billion. So that's got to hurt. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, literally, this is a guy for whom the issue of like, you know, risks and troubles and uh, losses, you know, with finances is a major theme. And like one of and he's kind of notorious in a sense for having lost out on Apple. But we can also see that it's part of this larger pattern of him having trouble with um you know, making his businesses work out despite his, you know, talents and, and uh, despite his uh, skills in, you know, crafting machines. So we can even we can even see in his chart that, uh, you know, his Mars is applying to a uh, superior square, an inferior square with, with Saturn, Saturn in superior position. And that's in the 11th, the, the house of like allies and, 
and uh, friends. So, you know, he literally <laughs> kind of lost out, you know, on this big opportunity um, from his, from, you know, sp uh, splitting ways with, you know, these uh, business partners he had. So, uh, yeah, it sucks. Um, <laughs> and there's a few other examples I found, but I didn't uh, include them in this. But um, there's a few people I know with Mars uh, in Taurus ruling the Ascendant in Aries who have um, lost big court cases and then, you know, been stuck with massive bills to pay. Um, so yeah, this is a, this can be a theme with uh, people who have this placement. And that is the end of the uh, second house section. So next we'll be looking at uh, Aries rising with Mars in Gemini, the third house.